This is Geometry, Unit 3, Day 3. We're working on figuring out our geometric theorems. A theorem is a statement that can be proven. Where a definition is a statement that we don't need to prove, it explains the term. A postulate is a term that we accept to be true. And it's the theorem is a statement that can be proven. So when we do proofs, we're working on showing that the theorem is true. Here we have the congruent statement theorem. Uh, segment congruence is reflexive and transitive. This is the reflexive property of congruence. So what this is saying is for any segment AB, segment AB for reflexive. Reflexive means that it's congruent to itself. Sounds a little silly, but this is the reasoning, reflexive property of congruence, allows us to state that something is congruent to itself. Now, transitive property, if you have two items that are congruent, and that item is actually congruent to something else, then we can say that the first is congruent to the third. That AB is congruent to EF. This is the transitive property of congruence. So when, we're, <clears throat> when we are working through a proof and we recognize that we're dealing with one segment that's congruent to another, that segment is congruent to another, we can then say that the first segment is congruent to the second segment. We can do the same thing with angles. We have angle congruence is reflexive and transitive. Reflexive property of congruence. For any angle A, angle A is always going to be congruent to angle A. Remember that congruence focuses on size and shape, so when you put an angle on top of itself, of course the size and shape are going to match up. Transitive property of congruence for an angle. If angle A is congruent to angle B, and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. In other words, if I got the same grade as you, and you got the same grade as your buddy, then I got the same grade as your buddy. Essentially, that's what that's saying. Angle A is congruent to B, angle B is congruent to angle C, then A is congruent to angle C. So, for some examples, we're going to name the property. Notice which of those properties, is it a reflexive property where an item equals or is congruent to itself? Or does it have three parts to it? H and T, T and B, and H and B. 
So of course that's transitive. Property of congruence. Here we have two segments that are congruent to each other. Notice that the order this time is a little bit different. That's not super important. That's not a game changer here. So it's still reflexive property of congruence. It's still the same segment. And here with segments, you can notice it has three parts to it. It's pretty easy to identify. DB is congruent to ST. ST is congruent to GH. So DB is congruent to GH. And that's the transitive property of congruence. So on the next page, we're looking at our first proof. Notice that we're writing this as a two-column proof. We have statement <clears throat> and reason. And at the very beginning, we have the given information. And we have what we're trying to prove. So let's start out with looking at what our given information is. You always want to pay a lot of attention and, and really focus on what's being shared with you. We know that AC is made up of AB, and then again, they're saying AB. AB plus AB is going to equal AC. Well, that seems kind of funny here, but we need to prove that this segment is congruent to that segment. If the whole thing is made up of AB twice, we're going to be able to show that AB would then have to be equal to BC. So we start out with our given information and our reason for that statement is it's given. Now we have the small part plus the small part equals the big part. That's a little bit different than your given. Notice that the BC is in here this time. That's called the segment addition postulate, where the two small parts add up to be the whole part. Well, in this case, AC equals those two. AC equals these two. So when AC equals AC, we can say that both of these equal each other. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. We can call that the transitive property. And then how can we get the AB and the BC to be the only things left? What went away? What's not there anymore? The ABs are not there. So that's called the subtraction property of equality. you got to give reasons on the right-hand side for why this statement existed. Okay, let's try our own down here. In this example, all the statements are laid out for you. All the reasons are available in these boxes. What we're given, we know that ray BD bisects angle ABC. So you need to think about what does that mean? Well, an angle bisector cuts the angle in half. It makes two angles congruent to each other, or two angles equal to each other. And if these are both equal to each other, 
then of course the whole thing is made up of just one of those times two. So let's see if we can come to that whole proof here. Well, we take our given information and we put it as the first statement. What's going to be our first reason? It's always going to be the given. So we can come up here to our boxes and we can cross off that option. How do we know if ray B D bisects angle ABC Look at the picture, see what that means. How do we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2? If a ray bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. That's what an angle bisector does. So we can say if angle bisector if an angle is being bisected then we have congruent angles that's about as short a way as you can write that statement. You're allowed to write every word if you like, or you're allowed to shorten it up. You need the if. The if has to happen earlier in your proof. The then is happening right now. The then says two angles are congruent, so we have angles are congruent. If angle bisector, then two angles congruent. So we can cross that one off. What does it mean to be congruent? To be congruent, you're the same size and shape. If you're congruent, then your measurements will be the same. So that's where we come up with them to be equal to each other. Okay, well it looks like there might be a little mistake here. If two angles are congruent, then they are equal in measure. So when we're trying to put this down into our proof, of course it would have to have been written the correct way. Why are these two angles equal to each other? If two angles are congruent, if happened before, if congruent, then equal. That's about as short as you can write it. It sounds like Yoda, if equal, oh, sorry, if congruent, then equal. Or you can write it with all the additional words. So how about this one? The measure of angle ABC equals the measure of 1 plus the measure of 2. 1 is the small part. 2 is the small part. The measurement of angle ABC is the big part. The small part plus the small part equals the big part. What is that called? Angle addition postulate. So for number three, we had used that one. Um, angle addition postulate, the two small parts equal the big part. Yes, I, I see that this is POE. That's, I'm, I apologize, that doesn't seem accurate either. That would be all correct on your quiz. 
angle addition postulate is when the two small parts add up to the big part. Now, if angle 1 equals angle 2, then we can substitute that in in place of angle 2. So that's called the substitution property of equality. And then we're combining our like terms or we're simplifying this expression, bringing it together. We have the measurement of angle 1 plus the measurement of angle 1. Now we're going to say we have 2 times the measurement of angle 1. Earlier in our notes, we actually call that uh, combined like terms, which essentially would be what this is. If you have two terms that are the same, kind of like x and x, then you have 2x. The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 1, you have 2 times the measure of angle 1. On page 8, we're looking at a final example. The given says R is the midpoint of segment AM. So there's segment AM and R is the midpoint. We also know that MB is the same length as AR. So what we need to prove is that M is the midpoint of RB. So we have to come up with a plan first. Before you do a proof, you must come up with a plan. You can't just start it. Algebra problem, you can just start it. You can start calculating through. You'll eventually get to the end, and x equals some number. But here, like if you drive to Grandma's house, you can't get to grandma's house if you don't know which way to turn. You can't write a proof if you don't know what your path is going to be. So what we notice is from the given information, if R is the midpoint, that's telling us that we have two segments that are the same measurement. That's what a midpoint would mean. R is the midpoint of segment AM. We also know from our given that AR and MB are the same. So they both get a single tick mark total. If you notice that these two segments have the same amount of tick marks, then that makes M the midpoint of that segment. So that looks like our path on how we're going to be able to say that M is the midpoint of segment RB. So we start with a two column proof. We start with our first statement, our given information. Looks like we put all, both parts of our given information up front. Sometimes we spread that out. Sometimes we use it all at once. What's our first reason? The given. Now we're looking and we see that AR is congruent to RM. That's not what it said up in the given, so we can't call that given. How do we know that AR, look at your picture, is congruent to RM? Why do we have the same tick marks there? Well, looking at our choices up here, if a point is a midpoint, 
then it divides the segment into two congruent parts. So if midpoint, what does midpoint mean? Midpoint means that it's in the middle of a segment, breaking it into two congruent segments. So if midpoint, then two congruent parts. That's about as short as we can write it. You just can't say congruent parts. You gotta say why. If happened earlier, then is happening right now. How do we know that AR is equal to RM? If you look up at number two, you notice that the only thing different is now it says equal. So how do we switch from congruence to equal? We've already used this one. If two segments are congruent, then they are equal in length. If congruent, then equal. That's as short as we could possibly write that. Okay, next we're going to talk about how MB is congruent, or is, sorry, is equal to RM. Well, RM is here, but what switched those two? Why is that something different? Well, if you look back up in our given, that was one of our statements. That, R, that AR was actually MB. That MB was actually AR. So we're going to switch those two. And now it's MB equals RM. So what that's called is substitution. Property of equality. And then if you were equal, now you're congruent. If you're the same length, then you're the same size and shape if you're a segment. So now we've stated that MB is congruent to RM. So if you have two segments that are congruent, then M is the midpoint. If a point divides a segment, into two congruent parts, then it is a midpoint. We completed our proof.